So uh, you, Mike uh, Kowalewski, um, you had uh, several topics to deal in, in this meeting. Do you think that some of those uh, were more interesting for the attendees that would bring a new concept? Yeah, so I think the um, information on patellar luxation over time, we've developed more and more information and we're able to share that so that the treatment of patellar luxation not only is becoming uh, more accurate and successful, but more people are willing to take on more challenging cases because they understand not only what the problem is, but how to accurately define the problem and then how to accurately surgically correct the problem. So you are taking part also to the session on uh, surgical revision for total hip replacement and complication. What is your opinion on that? Yeah, that's a fantastic session. And we did a similar session in Bologna that focused on revision. And I think it's important to introduce to the audience what possible revision strategies there are so that rather than simply saying, well, there's a problem, we need to explain it. We can now say, here's a problem. We have a solution. We know how to do it. We can successfully do it, whether it's infection or wear, uh, loosening and that our success in revision slowly but surely is increasing. And cases that we would look at 10 years ago and say, you must explant, we now look at and say, we have a very good chance of making this work. Um, and I think overall that inc improves the long-term outcome because the implants stay in and functioning rather than being removed. Uh, you have also a lecture on uh, total hip replacement in condition different from uh, classical hip dysplasia. What are you dealing with uh, condition? Yeah, so in that lecture, we talk about the most common reasons other than hip dysplasia. And those are uh, capital physeal fracture, uh, chronic luxation, traumatic luxation, and potentially uh, acetabular malunion. And those are the most common indications other than hip dysplasia. And each of those presents its own challenges, and most of those challenges can be identified during the preoperative planning, you can look and say, well, this part will be difficult for this reason. And that's very useful because then in surgery, it makes the surgery easier if you know what challenges and obstacles you'll face and already have a solution prepared rather than um, trying to find, figure it out as you go.